Hey there, Nerd Clan. Head on over to MinuteWithMary.com slash discount to get 15% off my award-winning mascara. Get those lashes looking lovely. Even if you got a mask on, you could still bat those lashes. Sam would be proud. <laughs> MinuteWithMary.com slash discount. From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Welcome back. My name's Mary Larson. My name's Blake, and I hope you don't mind while I go in the corner and just enjoy some good history porn. Oh my goodness gracious, right? All of the history porn in this chapter, and I am a... About it, man. Seriously. It, it just... This book just keeps getting better and better, and it's like, we already loved Sam and Graham, and then we just get to hear their voices even more and get to know their personalities even more, and we are here for the ride. You throw in some history, and it's all about Scotland? Sign us up, baby. Just a bunch of people killing each other, and the 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 the, the decent banter between Sam and Graham. I, I'm in on it. And, Me too. And I think the, the, the book... While it started very awkwardly, I mm-hmm. would say, mm-hmm. it's finding its groove, I think. I I remember I, last night um, I was writing a, a blog entry for WandaVision for the for the newly minted MCU Diaries mm. at MarianBlake.com. By the way, go to MarianBlake.com. <laughs> check out all the stuff about the MCU Diaries. But uh, regardless, I was writing it. Uh, and Well, I told Mary I was going to start writing it before we watched This Is Us. And Mary had a big meeting to go to before that uh, show began. So for like the hour, hour and a half, I figured, you know what? I'll get the, the, the article done and it'll be great and I'll have it out tomorrow. I sat there for an hour, mm-hmm. didn't write one freaking word. I just stared at a blank screen. And it was because I couldn't find the way in. And the way in for me is always very important, uh, whether it is a, an article or it is a podcast or whatever. The way in or the reason for it to be needs to happen. And I don't know at the beginning of the book they had quite down what their way in was. You, you know, you're right. That's what I feel like. I, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, but it was, it was. That's how it felt to me though, too. Yeah. And I feel like at this point where we are in chapter six, beginning with six, actually, really. And then seven, uh, where we have the way in. It's, it's not that it wasn't enjoyable. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, it didn't know what it was. It was a little nebulous. Yeah, nebulous is a good word. Mary. I love that word. Great word. Thank you. Great, great vocab. Hey, you know, I did well on my SATs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, so the before- longest running joke in Mary and Blake Media history. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. So before we get into the show, I do want to remind you all that we've got loads of things happening at MaryandBlake.com. We have, like Blake said, the MCU blog that is happening. The MCU diaries. diaries. Come on, get it right. Got to get the branding diaries. right. Diaries. Um, we, of course, <laughs> are back in session with This Is Us too. For all of you who watch This Is Us, um, we still have the Potterverse going nice and strong for all of our Potter fans. Bridgerton, of course, if you if you just are new to Bridgerton, we've got a Bridgerton podcast. Can't miss out on that. And keep your eyes and ears open because once This Is Us is off season, we start our new podcast, The Last Kingdom. So it's yet to be named. Yes. It's yet to be anything really materialized other than the fact that, that, we're, doing. that we're doing it. So just keep your eyes peeled. Make sure you're following Mary and Blake Media on all sorts of social media. We'd love to see you there. You know what? For fun, like let's just do a little experiment. Because I always wonder, like, do people blank out and zone out in this part of the podcast episode? Okay. What, are you, what are you thinking? I want you to find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And I want you to send us a message and just write, I got you, Mary. I got you. Oh, okay. I like it. I got you, And that's going to be me knowing you don't zone out all the time in this part of the, <laughs> of so the podcast. Instagram, 
or Facebook, Facebook or, or Twitter, Twitter or whatever. Just just go Write to us a message. go to Mary and Blake and just yep. put I got you, Mary. Yeah, there you go. Someone that means someone didn't skip over this portion. That's what I'm saying. Or they didn't zone. There you go. <laughs> All right, you ready to get into this chapter, Marvin? I sure am. Let's do it, shall we? We shall. So this chapter is chapter seven, the sweetest morsel I ever tasted. And Blake is going to be reading a yeah, quote normally, from this chapter. Normally this is when Mary reads the excerpt of the chapter. But, you know, she has deferred to me as this is full history porn. Yes. And she thought it was apropos that I read it. And the one that I selected today is on page 114 of our edition of this book. It says the following. We park up in our Terry and June wagon to greet you and Cameron. The 27th Lochiel. I can't help thinking of his fearsome predecessor, Sir Ewan, the 17th Lochiel, known as the Ulysses of the Highlands. Such was his enormous strength and size. He lived until he was 90, 16 to 20, 1629 to 1719, was a vigorous Jacobite, married three times, and it is credited as shooting the last wolf in Scotland in 1680. Like. Not a good thing to be credited for. Wolves yeah. don't attack humans. I feel like that's one of the things that you probably don't really I mean, want to Maybe in publicize. other countries, wolves are not endangered species. But here in the United States, for those of you outside of the U.S., it's a big deal. Okay, We accidentally <laughs> killed all of the wolves. And then we had to go get wolves from Canada because we were like, oh, my God, wolves don't kill people. We totally messed up, and they're a huge, important part of the ecosystem. Can we please borrow 22 of the Canadian wolves and put them in Yellowstone Park? And bada bing, bada boom, the ecology of the West was brought back, thanks to the (laughs) wolves. Could you imagine being the guy that was like, got the last one! (laughs) Got it! And then his buddy has like the awkward Michael Scott face. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you should have gotten that last one. <laughs> anyway, we'll continue. So anyway, in Scotland, maybe it's not this big of a deal. He is credited as shooting the last wolf in Scotland in 1680. E- <laughs> <laughs> good job, Mary. You're welcome. That was good. Uh, in a fight with the English, he was about to be stabbed on the ground when he leant up and bit his aggressor's throat All out set. and said... Of the incident afterwards, it was the sweetest morsel I've ever tasted. I mean, Maybe let's be he real. Was bored of porridge. Let's let's be real. That does not taste good. You know what? Little irony. Mur- mud and dirt was on that. And mud and sweat. dirt. Yeah, I'm f- I feel like you know what? We may get some bone marrow. I I honestly am covering my neck right now. Blake can attest to it. <laughs> that is true. That's so gross. Nobody touches my Adam's apple. Nobody. Not my kids. Not my wife. That guy bit the guy's Adam's apple off. Just he was bit like, right out and said, and said, mm, tastes like a Macintosh. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh, Mary's bringing the heat tonight. Hey, you know, I just had a cookie. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Blood sugar's good. We're having some Thank fun. you, Peggy, for the snickerdoodles. <laughs> ready. Coming off the top rope with okay, that Okay, time for some GBGs. Our goods, yes. our bads, our greats for chapter seven. What do you got, Mary? Sweetest morsel I ever tasted. Yep. Um, my good was hearing about all the history. But let me tell you, these people need some sports. <laughs> all right? I appreciate the fact that people need to blow off steam, that guys like to wrestle and do all these things. I know that they could play shinty. I know they could run around and like catch the sheep that wander, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, this is why we don't bite people in America as often. We have baseball and American football and basketball. Please don't say like, American football. It's just football. Okay. Whatever. It's just football. Whatever. So I'm just saying that like, by the time people came over here from all the different countries and everything, I wonder if like a lot of them are like, you know what we shouldn't do? <laughs> we like, shouldn't be biting people's throats. For fun. Just for funsies. It actually doesn't taste that sweet. You know what it does? 
a real apple. <laughs> so they needed sports. You know, it tastes good Cracker Jack. Let's go to the baseball game. My bad. Staying on this topic of gross things, blood or cabbage water and porridge? Mm. Listen, mm. my parents mm. went on a cabbage diet in the 90s. I bet a lot of you remember that diet. Well, guess what? They made me do it, too. My whole house smelled like cabbage. It's terrible. I'm Scottish and Polish. There's enough cabbage in my life. Uh, don't need it in porridge. <laughs> and then my Does great- cabbage make you pee? smell yeah it does i I don't know i don't eat enough cabbage to know you can like sweat the smell of cabbage oh god buddy buddy, being in elementary school and having cabbage leftovers in your lunchbox like you're smelly i bet and like no just you as a person are smelly already as like an elementary school kid buddy i wasn't most popular i'll tell you that (laughs) my great for this chapter Cabbage girl. Oh, it's the Scottish cabbage girl. Bet she even eats cabbage with her oatmeal. <laughs> anyway, my great. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just thankful that I'm ingesting this content as a book. Like, I frequently talk about how I like to learn about history through shows, through Outlander, mm-hmm. through the Tudors, yep. through movies. If I had to watch these people biting throats and having like gladiatorial games for fun and just chopping people's legs and arms and everything off, I. Nope. <laughs> so I'm glad it's a book. Yeah, I'm going to go back to covering my neck. Okay, Blake, what's your GBG? The good. Hearing about how many people still speak Gaelic in the Highlands today and throughout Scotland. It's great to know that the culture is still thriving mm. and alive despite the English very real attempt to... <laughs> extricate it Agreed. from the from uh from the scottish life uh, which is you know sad and unfortunate but uh, i'm so happy to know that it is just you know, 70,000 people are, mm-hmm. are speaking it and they're teaching it and there are grants and there it's just it's really cool to know that the bad sam talking oh first off what sam okay you're a sam hate you're a Graham Love and I, a Sam Hate. Yes, I will say that. Oh, okay. I, 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 uh, so everyone we, just we already it? we already noticed we already know that you know Graham Graham is my spirit animal. Okay. Sam is definitely not. <laughs> just he. <laughs> Sam I'm, is me. I I'm sure Sam <laughs> is a really nice guy. Had a chance to meet him once. Yeah. Talked with him. Told him I was Team Frank. To his face. To his face. And what did he do? He was not happy with me. (laughs) (laughs) I was very fortunate. And I know all of you are probably Mm -hmm. looking at your radio or your phone or your iPod or wherever. Radio. You you know, well, people, I listen to podcasts on the radio. Car radio. Okay. I know most of you are probably looking at that thing saying you had a chance to meet Sam Hewitt and you told him that he was. And you told me he was, you were team Frank Blake. Are you out of your mind? Yes, I have. To make a point, okay? <laughs> okay, so anyway, what anyway, is your bad? My bad Poor Sam. is that Sam talking about his competition in France, but the Tough Mudder races with his crew. What about it? After Graham just got done talking about how there were a bunch of Scots running 500 yards across of a battlefield at Culloden. And oh. Yeah. And you're try- it, it was like as if you were trying to compare your Tough Mudder race to what... The people at Culloden were That's doing. That's how you took it, okay? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it's not that I took it that way, but my comment here is: my, this is what I I wrote exactly. I know it was supposed to be complimentary of his crew, but bro, not a great look. <laughs> See, I just took it as, once again, Sam and Graham are spending all this time together. Sam and Graham are probably having a dram at some point in this, you know, mud, talking about things. And, you know, you just talk. He's probably like, oh, my God, I ran through mud. You know, he's not saying, I know what it was like to be in Culloden. No, I know. I ran through mud and all these obstacles. And it was cold, man. (laughs) I enjoyed reading that part, actually, because it made me realize I never want to do that. No. Not one Freezing ounce. cold water and then get electrocuted, Mm-mm. but not like in a good way. That just warms you up. Not in a fun like, ooh, that was like re- releasing tension in my back way. I just, <laughs> it sounds like you're going to have uncomfortably hard nipples all the time. Like because it's cold, so watch out. Yep. And then you get shocked. Nope. And I, I can imagine a scenario. I for life. I can imagine a scenario where <laughs> this <laughs> might be appealing, but not. In this, in and they're like, the, you get a beer at the end. No, no, no. 
<laughs> How about I just walk to a pub? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I will just stay in my five star hotel and eat baguettes. Okay, Graham, what's your grade? Exactly. <laughs> my grade is hearing the real history uh, and being overwhelmed by the history, the way that Graham was when he saw all this stuff at the castle and like the flag and the sword and touching it and, and like looking at it and just thinking, wow, dude, this is real and i am in the presence of something that is real i'm in the presence of a, a, an actual artifact and it is overwhelming and i actually remember having that same feeling mary mm -hmm. when you and i did our live finale podcast in season four a mere two years ago. I know. At this imagine point. that. Oh my god, two years ago. It's crazy. crazy when we crazy. did the season four Outland of finale podcast, we had you know it was in Newport, Rhode Island, and we had 150, 170, whatever it is, people from all across the globe come and enjoy you know live music and and the, a live viewing, a live podcast, and friends and drinks and it, like fife and drum corps. It was crazy. It was. And we held it at the old colony house in Newport, Rhode Island, which, which, which was the old courthouse, one of the older buildings in Newport. And it was a foundational building in Rhode Island, visited by Was George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. And it was there. We had our live podcast there. We, I was sitting at a desk that Thomas Jefferson sat and... I, w I remember. What did I miss? I was, I was what overwhelmed. I yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Good. You know what? Good one. Here comes the General Washington. I was overwhelmed by the history when that all happened. When we first went into that room, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is something." Like the people, like real adults. You kind of got that thing when Sam said, "Like you could hear the cries standing yes. on the field." It, yeah. it was like that. You can you can see. Thomas Jefferson just high stepping his way across <laughs> the, the the room, saying, "What did I miss?" Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I was overwhelmed by that moment and that feeling. Maybe when you're a history nerd, and maybe you're not a history nerd, and you you don't ever get that feeling. But I'm telling you, it is very real, and it is something that I experienced. Love it. So that was my Cutie. great. Mary, what stands out to you in this chapter? Uh, I know this is very history centered. It is all names and all dates and all fighting. And food. Lots of food. Lots of food, which is good. I'm in. I'm in on the food. But I know for someone, even for me, like I love this kind of stuff. I sit down, I break it down, and I and I can't I just stick it into my veins, essentially. But even I was getting a tad like, okay, who, what, is what? And this clan was a super clan because it was created by the Macintoshes and this person and they made a whole new clan and they were fighting the Camerons because of this and that. Like, yeah. wow, man. Like, are they wearing jerseys? Because that's the only way we're going to know <laughs> who we're cutting. Who, who's wearing the home jerseys? Who's wearing the road jerseys? I got a little glassy-eyed, glassy-eared during those portions as well. Like, just get me to the meat. And this is where I would fail in history class. Sure, because okay? it gives you a popsicle headache. And I understand... How cool. A bunch of them would get together and they would do all these things. Okay, let's let's start chronologically from the book, though, okay, if we sure. can. Yeah, we yeah. start off with porridge. Yes. Which Sam loves. Po I'm out on porridge. I'm surprised Sam doesn't have Sassanac porridge. Because the way he wrote about it, he could sell porridge, man. <laughs> like, it keeps you full. I, I eat it even when I film Outlander. Like, all he needs to say is, like, I rub it on my chest and that's how I look as good as I do. Like, Sam... Mm -hmm. Porridge, except the blood. No, thank you. Uh, out on porridge. And then we get to hang out. And Especially I can't say his name. Solidified porridge. I can't say the. Gillibridge. Yeah. It's Gillibridge. What's his last name? McBride? McMillan. McMillan. Okay. Gillibridge. Okay. So how amazing to A, have him back because, of course, he's so beloved. We hear his his voice all the time. We His angelic we, voice. Yeah. You get to, of course, see him in, in that. That scene where just like you can tell that Claire's tickled <laughs> inside thanks to the little looks at Jamie and he's whispering to her what it all means. Oh, it just brings me back. But to know that this was his first language, that Gaelic was his right, first yeah. language and he didn't learn English until he went to school. Mm -hmm. 
crazy. This this hidden language. I mean, obviously, there's people who learn to you know how you're born and raised is is how you speak. But I didn't know that it was still spoken to that degree that yeah, someone yeah. could be raised that way. Wild, totally wild. You know, it's like. A hidden language that you you learn in college, you know. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. Learn ancient Greek, you know. I'm going <laughs> to. <sighs> yes. So, um, you just the hang the hanging out with time with Gilabrish. Yep. Um, let's see. Okay, let's get to the fighting. Let's just get to the fighting. Right. Man. Yeah. I. So there was the gladiatorial thing. Yes. Yeah, the, the thirty the, Camerons the cam- and yeah. thirty Macintoshes. They just. <laughs> They didn't have the Camerons didn't have enough guys. Was it that the Camerons didn't the have Macintoshes. enough guys? The Macintoshes didn't have enough guys. So they guys. get Henry Wine. So they get Henry Wind or Wine, Wind whatever his name Edward. is. He's just some guy at the pub. He's like a blacksmith, and they're like, "Yeah, hey, you want to fight? Yep. Yeah. Why not? Time to fight." And he's one of the few survivors of the whole thing. Um, but it's, I just I, love that they were fighting. This I, is really what my parents did to me and my brother. Right, but like on a real world scale. And it is uh, okayed by the King of Scotland, where he's like, you know what? You guys have been just, you're getting on my nerves. You've been fighting for like 300 years. Yeah. I think it's enough time. Yeah. Like, let's just. You know what? See who the ultimate winner is. Let's just make an amphitheater. Yeah. And you guys just pound it out, man. Pound it out. Goodness gracious. <laughs> and then, of course, this is where you get a little confused. So the Macintoshes were part of a Federation clan chatting. Okay, yes. and it was a group of like-minded headcases who all got together and formed a super clan. And um, the two teams, the Camerons and the Clan Chatton, which was just a whole bunch of people, yes. like pretty much the leftovers yes. from everyone else that was slaughtered by Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> just give us your leftovers. And um, the the Clan Chatton, the leftovers, they were heavily defeated. Right, because the, half, half the people... <laughs> Half the people left mm-hmm. because one of the clans was put on the left, and the other clans let the other left because of that. And it, it and then was, we had the Black Taylor of the Axe, who got the rest of them. Yes, and, and he went and killed. A, <laughs> this is your favorite part. I love this part. It's the best. It's hold on. Where it's is like it? a terrible. You know what this reminds me of? The stories like the the stories of Grimm, like the. You know how there's like the nursery, not the nursery tales, but like the kids' stories, like the Little Mermaid, the Little Mermaid that we know, really it's wretched. The Little Mermaid doesn't get the prince in the end and she flies, flings herself off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of like those fairy tales which don't end well. Black Taylor of the Axe, so-called because of his terrifying ability with a lockaber axe. In this battle, the Battle of Boon Garbane, Black Taylor, henceforth to be known as just the axe, killed the chief of the Macintoshes with the aforementioned hit giant head chopper but he didn't stop there oh no 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 the axe went on to kill a couple of dozen more macintoshes with his hefty tool like some whiskey fueled grim Hmm. reaper those that survived fled to a small hollow called i'm not even going to try the pronunciation kul nan kuleg thinking themselves safe but our dear friend the axe was only warming up he led his camerons to the hideout and slaughtered every last one of those macintoshes yes you read that correctly. Not he killed a lot of Macintoshes, or even most of them. No, Donald Tilly, blah, 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 Cameron, Black Taylor of the Axe, killed all of them. And after the battle, or massacre, depending on your point of view, the Axe went back to tell the mother of the infant chief of Clan Cameron the good news. They all did. I killed every last bastard Macintosh there. What do you think of that? Perhaps in his enthusiasm for a slaughter, the axe had forgotten that the said mother of the infant chief was, in fact, a Macintosh herself. Needless to say, she didn't take the news of the slaughter, everyone with her surname, well at all, and tried to throw the infant son on to the fire. What? Imagine that, like just killing your own kid because all your whole family got murdered by this dude. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I can't. The axe saved we, Alan Cameron, a bit of a small name, that one, and banished the mother from Loch Aber territory forever by tying her naked to a horse, her mm. face to the tail. The Meeting horse the was whipped, and off she went, leaving the axe, no doubt, to quietly clean the mountains of gore from his well-used I mean, just weapon. picture that. Your face being tied to a horse's tail, a.k.a. its butt. And you're just being kicked. <laughs> oh my! God. All because they were stealing each other's 
cows, man. That's like, that's like, how this whole beef started. They need to play baseball. Mm-hmm. Or Just basket. Something. Something. Do some yoga. Yes. <laughs> some mindfulness meditations, please. Oh, man. But what, you know... So like you said, you kind of get lost in the shuffle. We're, we're seeing all these different names, and I'm really excited to see all this stuff on screen. I mean, of course, we're, we're nearing up to Valentine's Day and Men and Kilt's the show, and I'm just going to say it again. I'm really happy that we read this book before the show. Um, here is the passage that I was referring to about the 500-yard dash. The Camerons started second after their bitter rivals. The Macintoshes had charged first, and this is at the Battle of Culloden. The Piper would have played the rant and then passed his pipes to the attendant boy, and at the same time, unsheathing his broadsword. Again, I imagine Lockheel beginning that 500-yard dash. Imagine the sound of the screaming and the panting as hundreds of men ran forward like hungry wolves. If you've ever sprinted 500 yards, you know how hard that is. Now, imagine doing it with cannons packed with grape shot, a mixture of lead balls, nope. iron nails, anything no that could be packed into the mouth of a cannon and fired like a shotgun. With the withering platoon volley, fire of disciplined battle-hardened British troops. Some Highlanders held their plaids in front of them in the vain hope of shielding themselves from the rain of lead tearing through them. And now imagine doing it over rough ground, carrying a sword and shield. All of this ran through my mind looking at the weapons assembled in Achnery Castle. Just, I, I have to say, Graham's storytelling here is is good. Mm-hmm. It is quite good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm on Team Graham here. Where do you find yourself, Mary? Are you are you Team Graham, Team Sam, or Team both? I'm I'm here for the party, man. I'll hang with anybody. I'll hang out with Duncan. <laughs> yeah, I, what it really comes down to is we're Team Duncan. Preach. <laughs> I'm all about the Duncan Lacroix. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a really interesting chapter. I will say that. I was thrown off by the title. I did, especially because it started off with porridge. I just thought it was going to be about a whole bunch of food that they ate during this time frame. Mm-hmm. You know, food, bite your throat, became blood and gore and all this kind of stuff. So I was a little confused by the title, but I enjoyed it. And in the book, like the physical book, mm-hmm. in the middle of this chapter is when you get all those fun pictures. Right. You do get all the great pictures right here. You get the ones of Sam, uh, Graham growing up and like him in his early plays, him with next to his uh, stand in the double, the stunt double for The Hobbit, uh, uh, you know, just being at all of the Outlander events and all, all the stuff that he's involved in, seeing the camper, the Fiat fiasco on the road and our home during the Men in Kilts shoot. Really cool stuff. Yeah. Something that also happens too is. Uh, Graham talks about how, um, actually, no, I'll just read it. There was one scene where I was making a speech inside of a cottage with a roasting fire, trying to gather money for the Jacobite cause in Outlander. I suggested to the director that I do it in my shirt sleeves, very Obama town hall meeting style, a man of the people. We started shooting the scene this way, and after we'd shot half the scene, we were told that I had to have the jacket on. Word had come through. So as a result, if you look at episode five of season one, I keep jumping between jacket on and jacket off. In the same scene, it makes me want to go back and read it now uh, oh, and watch it now. Oh yeah, I never <laughs> noticed that after all, after how many times I've watched that episode, I've never noticed. And you know what else I'm really not in on? I am not, 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 not in on midges. <laughs> oh my gosh, midges suck. And Graham had to go sleep outside with the midges. Mm-mm. Nope. I love that this was part of his contract that he nor his agent really paid attention yeah, to. Yeah, he has to sleep in this tent. Yeah. I'm out on sleeping in tents as well. Me too. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, uh, Sam could have been in Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Holy smokes. In the movie, Mamma Mia with Pierce yeah. Brosnan. Yeah. Everybody was hammered making that movie. All they were doing <laughs> was just drinking Uzo. <laughs> And you, when you watch the film, yes. you know that they're all Hammond. Yes, the whole time. The whole time. Having a blast. Because let's be real, like they weren't live recording the singing then. Yeah. That was already done in the studio. Sure. So they were like, just go, go have fun. Yep. And uh, lastly, uh, Graham's third breakfast. That's what uh, Sam mentions mm-hmm. uh, for, for when Graham starts the day. It sounds quite a bit like somebody... That I know. Oh my gosh, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I quite enjoyed this chapter uh, for all the history porn and for the, you know what? 
decently improving back and forth between Sam and Graham. Agreed. Decently Agreed. improving. I'm, I'm, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Anything else you want to say about this chapter, Marvin? No, just on to the next chapter, my Let's darling. Let's close this one out, shall we? We shall. Let's do it. If I could find. There it is. Let's go. <laughs> for listening in i just appreciate you i really really do it's so lonely right now (laughs) and very lonely to know that like we can hang out that you got me yeah yeah, i got you don't forget i got you okay (laughs) um it just it to connect over this book to connect over the fact that one day we'll be in scotland our dreams will come true and we're going to plan this trip and do something fun and go see each other and hug each other again. That's just, I just feel like we are along for a journey with Sam and Graham back when you could go on journeys and it's fun. (laughs) And have adventures and sleep in tents with midges. I'm going on an adventure. We're going on an adventure. Uh, go to the join the ner- join the nerd clan dot com to check out all of great things there, including the Keep Calm and Crown On podcast that we're doing, or my Blake's book club covering Voyager, or Mary's book club that Yay! she is starting after Valentine's Day when she is covering the Duke and I, Bridgerton. which is Bridgerton, the first book of the Seriously, Bridgerton saga. You guys you can join for as little as $2 a month. That's less than you pay for a cup of coffee. If you are listening to this and we bring you joy, know that this is our full-time job. Like, this is what I do. I work from home. I sell my Minute with Mary makeup and I podcast. And every single one of you who contribute at jointhenerdclan.com mean the world to us. You keep this going. You keep our podcast studio up and running. You keep our websites up and running. You put food on our table. You help us pay our bills. You help us buy our cat food for Lumos. Know that it means a lot. So if you've been on the fence, like, do I help these jabronis out? Do you? Yeah. I say (laughs) go for it. Because this is an independently produced podcast. We're not part of the corporate monster that creates podcasts and helps water it all down. This is just Mary and I in our little studio. Paying for our dentist bills. Paying for dentists. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. So another, thank you. And another way, I know that times are tough. Like I know that tons of people, you know, especially with the pandemic, times have been tough. So maybe you can't support us in that way. The other way that you can support us that is amazing is by heading over to Apple Podcasts and leaving us a written rating and review. There are a ton of Outlander fans out there and more and more people are being exposed to it thanks to Netflix and they're searching for podcasts. So heading on over to Apple Podcasts in particular, whether that's the avenue that you listen to it or not, that is the most important one for us. Leave a written review and a five-star review. It would mean the world to us. Another one way that you could help support us too is by actually going to... Look at us just be like, give me, give me, give me. I know. Going to uh, Facebook and looking up Mary and Blake on Facebook, our page, and writing a little review there. If, If you don't do Apple, you don't have Apple Podcasts, that's okay. Go to Facebook, write a review for us at the Mary and Blake page. And we so. will continue to give you content. Look at us. We're like, give me, give me, give me. No, we're going to keep giving yeah. you this stuff. We're, we're working every single yes, day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because we love you and we appreciate you and we're so thankful to have you in our community. And go to the Mary and Blake Facebook page to keep up on all of the content that Mary and I are putting out every single day. So. Until next time, lads and lasses, I'm Mary Larson. My name's Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast. 